This week on Honey in the Sticks will be a special episode featuring some of our never before seen footage. Five, four, three, two, one, lift off. Life is a series of challenges and triumphs, all shaping us and defining who we are. In our busy lives, we somehow find a way to pursue our dreams, our dreams, our worlds, revolve around the outdoors. We were born to be hunting in the sticks. Hello, I'm Gary Remmers and welcome to this week's episode of Hunting in the Sticks. Today's show marks the end of our second season and man, was it a good one. Our Hit Squad staff spends countless hours producing our shows and what makes the final cut is just a small portion of what we film. From bow fishing, to frog gigging, we do it all. Come along with us as we take a look back on some really cool footage that did not make this season shows. This summer, the guys and I decided to do some bow fishing. So we headed down to Lake Barkley with my good friend, Mitchell Welty. Bow fishing is so much different than shooting a target because you're aiming two foot below the object when it's in the water. If you think you're a good shot with a bow, go shoot some fish. It's definitely harder than it looks. I think I was about 10% that night and uh, I was one of the better ones. Got him. I sunk out there, Mitchell. It's always special to see your children get their first anything, but watching Shane shoot his first fish with a bow made me one proud dad. Got Good job. Good job. Good job, kid. You know, at times, the fish were hitting us way more than we were hitting them. When these Asian carp decide to jump out of the water, it ain't just one at a time. There's hundreds. You almost need to wear a helmet when you're fishing. There's so many of them that jump out of the water at once. You think you'd just be able to shoot an arrow and hit them, but trust me, it's a heck of a lot harder than it looks. These 10 pound fish jumping everywhere can be very dangerous. And as you'll see in this next scene, Hunter gets hit with one and falls over onto the gaff hook which is what you use to get the fish out of the water. So the Asian carp took your feet out and you landed on the gaff. Yes. Now, did it hurt? Yes, it did. It still hurts. Right in the butt. I got fish you right in the butt. butt. I got fish you in my butt. You know, bow fishing is way different than normal fishing. Uh, you get to shoot and shoot and shoot. It's nonstop action. Uh, now that I've went bow fishing, I don't even like to sit on a bank and fish anymore.
There's another fun activity we like to do here in Kentucky at night, and that's frog gigging. Not only is frog gigging fun, they're good eating. All right, crew, let's get started. Sure. Don't ignore the law. You must call 811 at least two to three days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Renegade Steel Buildings is a nationally recognized supplier of the highest quality steel buildings and steel building accessories. Whether you're looking to build a new commercial building or storage building on your property, Whatever your steel building needs may be, Renegade offers the expertise and solution. To receive a hassle-free quote and brochure, call 1-877-363-4233 or visit us online at renegadebuildings.com. Dude, that ain't for you, that's for the deer. Remember, if you're not seeing deer, your neighbor must be using Big Buck Magnet. The Ram Cap is the next step in Broadhead Evolution. Its stealth body and blade design allow it to easily outperform its competition in accuracy, penetration, and cut diameter. It's the only broadhead on the market with a back cut, allowing the broadhead to rotate forward and cut its way back out. Listen to the exit, exit, exit. Hunting in the Sticks is brought to you by Texas 811. Kentucky 811, Champs Big Buck Magnet, Flag Shooter, Ramcat Broadheads, Renegade Steel Buildings, 811 Magazine, 811 Outdoors, and Steady Form. When it comes to hunting and fishing, we try to have fun all year long. Unfortunately, sometimes things just don't go our way. On a couple of trips Ricky and Jimmy made to Illinois, the trip started out well, but didn't have such a great ending. When these guys go to Illinois, they do it the hard way. No matter how cold or wet outside it is, they sleep in a tent. And on top of that, they eat this food that's just not right. actually been in my bag about a week. It still tastes good though. Even though they do things the hard way when they go to Illinois, they still seem to see plenty of deer. These guys were seeing deer, they just weren't seeing any big bucks. And after countless hours in the stand, finally, things started to look up.
he's right there. <sighs> After missing that deer, their problems didn't end. These guys are in the middle of nowhere, and on their drive home, boom, a nasty flat tire. Even though Ricky and Jimmy had a lot of problems on their first trip, they didn't give up and headed back to Illinois for late season. There was already snow on the ground and the deer were moving, but then, as usual, Mother Nature had other plans. Well, me and Jimmy are out here in Illinois, trying to do a little deer hunting. It's supposed to snow like a foot today. It's pretty much on its way. It's freezing cold. We're sitting all day. My gloves are soaked. Both our gloves are soaked. My back's soaked. My feet are cold. But You're just being a baby. I'm just being a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Jimmy's mother, we have hot chocolate. When the snow started to fall, these guys had no clue how bad it was gonna get. They had to pack their gear up and head back to Kentucky. Oh. Obviously, things did not go according to plan for the guys this year in Illinois. But after a long drive back to Kentucky, what happened next was just incredible. Ricky got home just in time to get on a giant buck. As soon as we got back from Illinois, me and Jimmy went to check trail cameras, and we had an awesome surprise. After a rough trip to Illinois, this was all we needed to get us back in the game. So we're walking to the stand, and me and Jimmy look down the hill, and we see a deer laying in the brush. I put my binoculars up, and wouldn't you know it, it's the big deer we got on trail camera. We decided to do a stalk on this buck, so the snow was finally gonna work in our favor. I was able to get in this creek bed and sneak up for a shot. So I snuck up behind this tree, and this buck is so focused on a doe, I was able to stand up, draw my bow, ease out from behind the tree, and I made a perfect shot of this deer. The ram cat did work. We give him about 20 minutes to lay here. He's done. I can't believe this. This is my biggest Kentucky deer. Easily my biggest Kentucky deer. Probably the third or fourth biggest deer I've ever killed. He'll make Pope and Young easy. Even though we had a camera problem and couldn't get the kill shot on film, Ricky, you should really be proud of that buck. What a monster. The steady four will increase your accuracy, confidence, and allow you to extend your range. The steady form is an essential tool for every bow hunter. Steady form will increase your accuracy, confidence, and will allow you to extend your range guaranteed. All right, crew, let's get started. Huh? Don't ignore the law. You must call 811 at least two to three days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. I'm Mark Stowe with Hunting in the Sticks, and I'd like to introduce Bob Bishop from Flag Shooter. They have partnered with us and 811 Outdoors and have a really cool product. Thanks, Mark. The tool is called the Flag Shooter and it's used in the damage prevention industry to mark underground utilities with paint and flags. To paint with the flag shooter, you squeeze the trigger. And to insert the flags into the ground with the flag shooter, you're gonna compress the handle down and it'll drive flags into the ground of various kinds, even frozen ground. That's impressive. How do folks get their hands on this tool? Firstly, you should contact your distributor of utility locating supplies and see if they've added the flag shooter to their lineup. If that's not the case, you can look us up on the web at flagshooter.com. The Steady Form will increase your accuracy, confidence, and allow you to extend your range. The Steady Form is an essential tool for every bow hunter. Steady Form will increase your accuracy, confidence, and will allow you to extend your range guaranteed. This segment is brought to you by Kentucky 811. Now it's time for your Kentucky 811 Can You Dig It? Viewer Clip of the Week.
That was an awesome video. Thanks for sending that in. And if you would like your personal video to appear on one of our future shows, go to our website at www.huntinginthesticks.com and follow the instructions. Ricky wasn't the only one out hunting during late season. Mark Porter was in Ohio with his bow trying to knock down a big buck. Well, it's the last weekend. We're uh, here in Ohio. I got Jimmy Duck on behind the camera for me. It, uh, I'm not sure how cold it is, but it's flipping cold. When we got here last night, it was about six. And uh, we got a little breeze going this morning, so I don't know how cold it is. But last weekend, we go hang in there and hunt all day and see what happens. You can see I hit it a little far back, but we're going to uh, just get down and ease out and come back here in the morning and try to find him. I guess I've been tracking for probably two or three hours and finally found him down in the creek. And as late season goes, he was laying there in the creek and went to drag him out and boom. This is paid off. <laughs> oh, I, was get, I was just getting ready to say I wouldn't jerk on that horn too much. I Did you get on video? I don't know how good I was on, on video. Oh, I had that pretty good. I was just going to say I wasn't pulling them horns like that. <laughs> So, uh, the unicorn, but, uh, anyway, we just amazing tracking job. I didn't give up on finding it. And, uh, Jimmy and Hunter found some blood about 200 yards, probably from where me and Ricky was looking and just, uh, glad we found him. And, uh, now we just got to get him out of here. I'm glad everybody's here. That buck Mark killed in Ohio was another great deer. And just another example of how things don't always go as planned, but can still have a positive ending. Even though these hunts ended on a good note, not all our hunts do. During youth turkey season, I took my son Shane out and we had a bird so close, I don't know how he missed it. Birds ain't the only thing we missed this year.
is right there. At the end of the day, we're only human. Things are not always going to go our way all the time, so you got to take the good with the bad and learn from your mistakes. This segment is brought to you by Texas 811. Now it's time for the Texas 811 Safe Digging Moment of the Week. He was laying there in the creek and went to drag him out, and boom. Uh, just getting ready to say I wouldn't jerk on that horn too much. If you can do it outdoors, we're all about it. Duck hunting, rabbit hunting, farmer hunting, crappie fishing, we do it all. Folks, I'd like to take the time and recognize a very important element to our show, and that is our sponsors. Without these folks, hunting in the sticks would not be possible. Throughout the season, we've had the opportunity to take a lot of these folks hunting and fishing, and we have made a lot of great friends along the way. And speaking of sponsors, I'd like to take a moment and talk about our flagship sponsor, and that is 811. Over the last 14 years, I have had the opportunity of promoting the message of safe digging. That message is simple. It is call 811 before you dig. If you're going out to plant a tree, put a fence post in the ground, place a mailbox, folks, you have got to think ahead and call 811 and have all the utilities located in that area that you're gonna dig or excavate, but you have got to simply make one phone call, 811. When you make that call, it allows you to know what is in that ground. And as we like to say at 811, know what's below. And by knowing what's there, you can go out and then dig safely. You don't have to worry about being electrocuted or digging through a gas line and causing an explosion. And the other side of it is, who wants all the headache of digging through one of those things? And then it ends up costing you money. And it's not the money side of it, it's the safety side of it that's important. You have really got to take a moment and call 811. And I personally want to thank them for the last 14 years of allowing me to deliver that message. And we're proud to be delivering that message with Hunting in the Sticks. Here at Hunting in the Sticks, we truly enjoy the time we spend together outdoors, not only with the hit squad, but also with our family and friends. Our show gives us the opportunity to involve them in our productions, and the memories we make with them are priceless. I'm Gary Rimmers, and thanks for joining us on the final episode of season two. Be sure to join us next year for season three, which promises to be bigger and better than ever. And as always, remember to practice safe digging and call 811 before you dig. Hunting in the Sticks is brought to you by Texas 811, Kentucky 811, Champs Big Buck Magnet, Flag Shooter, Ramcat Broadheads, Renegade Steel Buildings, 811 Magazine, 811 Outdoors, and Steady Form. 
For more information on Hunting in the Sticks, please visit our webpage at huntinginthesticks.com and on Facebook at Hunting in the Sticks.